but I want to dip into the horrible issue, the conflict ongoing in the Middle East. And today across to Washington to catch up with John Decker, who's the White House correspondent for Grey Television, because I want to find out what sort of an impact Joe Biden is having on this issue from Washington. I spoke to John Decker earlier this afternoon. John, good to talk to you again. I want to focus on the Middle East, where the situation continues to deteriorate. Now, US President Joe Biden is looking very impotent, isn't he? And he's just calling for a ceasefire and having no impact. Well, he's not demanding a ceasefire. He's expressing support for a ceasefire. And these statements, Chris, are not written by political people. They're written by diplomats. And that's very diplomatic language. Uh, keep in mind also that the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is couching his support for a ceasefire, saying that we agree to a ceasefire only if the parties, the Israelis uh, and Hamas, agree to a ceasefire. So there's that out. And meanwhile, in all of this, Chris, there's so much political pressure that's being put on President Biden by progressives in his own party, urging President Biden to take a tougher line on Israel. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a difficult situation because, of course, there are a number of political factors at play. There's the internal politics of Hamas and the other Palestinian organisations. There's the power plays within the Middle East involving Iran, Turkey uh, and the Arab nations. But there's a sense that there's no doubt that the Palestinians here, in, in, at least through Hamas, are testing President Biden's will. And at the moment, it's found wanting. Uh, they are testing his will. And what I am told by administration officials is that within the next 72 hours, that will determine the next uh, uh, exactly stage for what this administration may or may not do. And so uh, what really determines it uh, to a certain extent uh, are the actions of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, whether th this incursion uh, in trying to uh, thwart uh, these rocket attacks on Israel's territory continues. Uh, as you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu is trying to degrade Hamas, uh, not only militarily, but also politically. And essentially, until uh, Mr. Netanyahu believes that they've achieved that goal, uh, the attacks by Israel will continue. Look, uh, we all know that uh, President Donald Trump had his faults, but his Middle East policy was a, a great success. And we've seen Joe Biden reverse some of that. Joe Biden's continued to be strong on China. He's maintained that foreign policy stance. But in the Middle East, he has engaged with Iran again, looking to strike up those settlements with Iran again. And he's also re-established funding to the Palestinian Authority. It would seem that both those moves may be a mistake at this stage. They've only emboldened the Hamas terrorists. It emboldens Hamas and, uh, Chris, to your point, it also emboldens Iran. And the reason being is because uh, in all of this, uh, the vacillation undercuts the Abraham Accords. That was the big yep. foreign policy success in the Middle East achieved by President Trump. And as a result, uh, it gives essentially a green light uh, to Iran to continue funneling uh, the, this weaponry to Hamas to continue trying to upset, upset the peace that was achieved uh, during the Trump administration. And it was peace. It was peace that existed for all four years of President uh, Trump's term. Yeah, it's a hell of a situation. I don't think we're going to see Israel stop until they've knocked out all the weapons uh, stockpiles that they believe uh, are in Gaza. But I suppose it is what happens from there. And as you're saying, we wait to see what Joe Biden reveals in coming days. That's exactly right. And uh, I think that to a certain extent, uh, Mr. Netanyahu has given uh, President Biden out. After all, he alone can decide when they've achieved their goals. And if that pressure uh, continues to be imposed upon uh, Mr. Netanyahu and his government, he can say within 24 hours, our goals have been met. Uh, we can now talk about lowering the temperature in uh, this region and also talk about a ceasefire as well. Yeah, let's hope that comes sooner rather than later. Thanks for joining us again, John. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris.